Hello everyone and thank you for your interest in WUSC. Over the next 20 minutes, we're excited to tell you more about WUSC, our network, the volunteer cooperation program, the student refugee program, and how you can have a direct and concrete impact on your community by being part of your local committee. My name is Carolyn McKee. I'm a program officer for the student refugee program and I'm here with my colleagues. Hi, my name is Sophie saint -Laurent. I'm the program officer for campus and youth engagement. Hi, my name is Marilyn Tremblay and I'm a program officer for the student refugee program. Are you ready to get to know WUSC? Let's begin. WUSC is a non-governmental organization or NGO and a nonprofit that works in international development. As part of WUSC, you join a student network of more than a thousand people from across the country. This network, made up of student groups called local committees, gathers young leaders as well as staff and faculty at post-secondary institutions with whom WUSC works. Currently, more than 90 local committees exist from coast to coast to coast. The two main activities of local committees are to engage the public on international development issues and to participate in the student refugee program by contributing to the integration of the refugee students they sponsor. Each year, the WUSC Network organizes events to increase public awareness on access to education for refugee girls, forced migration, and the empowerment of women and youth. Just to give you an idea, each year more than 300 events are organized and more than 60,000 Canadians are informed on those topics. Not only do members of our network inform their communities, but they also encourage those around them to take action and become actors of change themselves. Each year, more than 20,000 Canadians are engaged, meaning that they took action on the issues WUSC is working on. Local community members are so accommodated and so passionate and one of the most concrete examples of this is definitely the fact that these local communities are sponsoring an average 130 refugees a year. Because of local community members, these students will continue their studies in a safe and welcoming environment. The local community network is in fact only a part of the broader WUSC network, which has many players in Canada and around the world including the more than 500 volunteers who leave on international cooperation mandates every year, the more than 90 institutional members of WISC, many donors, funders, and supporters, as well as more than 200 WISC staff in Canada and overseas. Among these staff is the campus team who are dedicated to supporting local committee efforts. Together, we are working to make our world more inclusive, more equitable, and more sustainable, in which all young people, especially women and refugees, have the means to improve their own quality of life and that of their families and communities. WUSC has over 65 years of experience, not only in international development, but also with its network of post-secondary institutions across the country. WUSC is well established, and its work is recognized both in Canada and abroad. WUSC's work through programs such as the Student Refugee Program, the Volunteer Cooperation Program, and other projects we operate in Asia, Africa, and South America are oriented towards the following three pillars to improve the quality of life of young people. To facilitate access to education, to create opportunities through capacity building or empowering individuals, and finally, to build economic opportunities through an inclusive market system. We do this work in more than 25 countries around the world, including in Canada. You're likely to have heard of the Student Refugee Program, or SRP, one of the main programs of WISC. To better understand this program, we'll summarize the basics of the term refugee and the mechanism that allows WISC to sponsor refugees. Finally, we will review the operation of the program in the countries where we work and the work that local committee members do in Canada. To do this, I have with me Marilyn, who works on the SRP. So Marilyn, can you tell us what the term refugee means? Yes, it is first and foremost a legal definition drawn from the 1951 Geneva Convention relating to the status of refugees. In order to obtain refugee status, one must first be eligible according to the following definition. Any person who has a well-funded fear of being persecuted because of their religion, their race, nationality, membership of a certain social group of their political opinion, and is outside of the country of where they are a national. If the person believes that they are eligible, they must apply to their country of asylum or to the UN Refugee Agency, the UNHCR. When the process is initiated, but the person does not have yet the refugee status, this is what we call an asylum seeker. I appreciate you mentioned that this is purely a legal definition, because the term makes it difficult to reflect the multitude of experiences lived by many people around the world. Absolutely. Refugee is a term, but absolutely not an identity. So we're now looking at pictures of famous people. Can you tell us more? 
Yes, in fact, you will probably recognize many of them. Michael Jean, MIA, Adrian Clarkson, Keenan, Einstein, Freud, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I think it's worth highlighting that uh, refugees are coming from different contexts, different backgrounds, and they all have a different story. There is no single story of journey, I think, in general, and this People uh, are all successful artists, scientists, and leaders, and they illustrate that refugees contribute positively to our society in many ways, and these contributions should be celebrated. It's important to highlight how refugee sponsorship in Canada allows individuals or organizations like WISC to sponsor refugees. You're totally right. In 1978, because of the Vietnamese refugee crisis, Canada created the private sponsorship of refugee program. When WESC local community decide to sponsor, they do so through existing sponsorship agreement that WESC has with the Government of Canada as a sponsorship agreement holder. Resettlement is when refugees move from one country of asylum to a third country where the, uh, this country has agreed to admit them and eventually grant them permanent residence. So then what's the difference between the SRP and other resettlement programs? Well, that's an amazing question, Carolyn. The SRP is one of the only youth-to-youth -youth sponsorship programs that combines resettlement of refugee students with post-secondary education. This allows uh, them to continue their post-secondary education in Canada. So is it difficult for refugees to access post-secondary education elsewhere? Well, yes, it is quite difficult. Only 1% of refugees are, are able to access higher education. Our program, although small, answers a crucial need. So in order to better understand the program, we're going to explore the two components of the SRP, the overseas side and the in-Canada side. So an important part of the program is, of course, the recruitment of students. Yes, the SRP team, in partnership with many organizations, including the UNHCR, recruits and selects students to be resolved to Canada through the SRP based on the number of placements the campus across Canada offer. In the last 40 years of the program, refugees recruited came from different backgrounds and from more than 39 countries of origin. So what are the criteria to be eligible for the SRP? Well, Carolyn, candidates have to be between 18 and 25 years old. They have to have the refugee status granted by the UNHCR, the, their country of uh, asylum, be single without no dependents, have a copy of their high school transcript or post-secondary transcript, and they also have to have a certain level of comprehension of French and English if they want to study in Canada. They also have to live in one of the countries where we operate the SRP. I know that WISC has recruited refugee students for the SRP from a number of countries over the history of the program. As of 2019, what countries of asylum does WISC recruit SRP students from? Well, WISC has been working in Kenya and Malawi, uh, Kenya in the Dadaab and Kakuma camp, and in Malawi in the Dalaka camp for several decades now. But more, more recently, we have been working, WISC has been working in selecting students coming from Uganda, Tanzania, Lebanon, and Jordan. We work with refugees who live in the refugee camps, but also um, with refugees who live in city called urban refugees. So why does WISC work in these regions in particular? Well, we try to work in contexts where uh, we can respond to either a major crisis or a protected refugee situation. We're also trying to work where there are no other durable solutions for refugee population at the moment, ensuring we can recruit and select students that will meet the language requirement of the program is another consideration for the program. Finally, for the SRP to be possible, the political context must be favorable and there must be opportunities for partnerships. I know another critical element to make the SRP possible is the involvement of local committees. Yes. Local committees are at the heart of WISC's work in Canada, not only because of their involvement in sponsorship, but also because they engage the public on core issues for WISC. But let's go back to refugee student sponsorship. While students have been recruited from their country of asylum and are currently participating in pre departure training and are going through immigration process, local committees are getting ready for their arrival. In November, the year before the SRP students arrive, local committees submit their intent to sponsor form to demonstrate that they have the resources necessary for sponsoring refugees. Resources include financial, social, and academic support in addition to post-sponsorship transition support, which are provided for a period of 12 months and a minimum of five persons must participate in the integration efforts. An important factor to consider for successful integration is an active local committee that works to build a welcoming community. Engaging the public on refugee issues is a great way to grow a local committee and build a welcoming community. 
The campus team at WISP will provide you with ideas, materials, and key dates to maximize the impact of your events. Local committees can raise awareness about forced migration more generally, barriers to higher education for refugees, and share positive stories and bust myths about refugees and newcomers. At WISP, we also work to provide access to education for girls affected by conflict. Yes, because they have to fulfill a lot of responsibility related to household chores and family care, young refugee girls are often forced to miss classes or to drop off out of school altogether. Education can empower girls and women to overcome the barriers they face on a daily basis. That's why it's important to raise awareness about these issues on campus and to take action so displaced and conflict-affected girls can reach their full potential. To do this, local committees help raise funds to support WISC's efforts to improve access to quality education for girls who are displaced or living in a conflict-affected area. Thanks in part to the initiatives of local committees, not only have 50,000 girls benefited from our programming, but we're also approaching gender parity within the SRP student cohort. Local committees can also take action on campus with the One World campaign. Sophie, can you tell us more? Yes, absolutely. As we mentioned, economic development and empowerment are at the heart of the work that WUSC does, and the One World campaign is a reflection of this in Canada. The most marginalized populations, especially women and youth, are more often excluded from the benefits of economic and social development. Yet, these women and youth are the driving force behind a more inclusive, equitable, and sustainable world. How can local committees help build the capacity of the most marginalized people in developing countries? Actually, each individual has the power to act and help build a barrier-free world that enables women and youth to become leaders in the development of their community. Local committees' actions and awareness-raising events not only support Canada's international development effort, but also contribute to the achievement of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. It's possible to act at different levels. At the individual level, making informed decision and taking action. At the local and national levels, by making your voices heard and raising awareness in the community. Or at the international level, by engaging in a concrete project such as international volunteering or refugee sponsorship. We can act now. Absolutely. Local committees can organize a one world event to spark lively discussions on their campus and inform the students' community about the social and economic issues women and youth face around the world. Each year, they organize conferences on topics they're passionate about. They become actors of change by advocating for women and youth empowerment. And they spread the word about how our local actions have a global impact. They refer to key dates such as Gender Equality Week in September Halloween in October, or International Development Week in February. And the good thing is also that you can get funding for your One World event, up to $1,000. And this funding comes with WUSC support in the planning of your event. Applications are available on my committee online. Is it possible for local committee members to volunteer overseas? Yes, of course. WUSC, in partnership with the Center for International Cooperation Studies, offers overseas volunteering opportunities for Canadian residents. Volunteers will work in partnership with organizations in developing countries to help create more economic opportunities for women and youth and make markets more inclusive. The duration of these volunteer mandates varies according to the needs of local partners, but they can range usually from three months to two years. What countries can volunteers go to? Most volunteers participate in international development efforts in 12 countries around the globe. Are students eligible to apply for an overseas mandate during the summer or as part of their co-op term? Yes, actually the program has a dedicated stream for students and recent graduates of post-secondary institutions that offers the opportunity to contribute to sustainable development projects in collaboration with our local partner organizations in Africa, Asia, and the Americas. The volunteers participate in a tangible learning experience by working and supporting the organizations. And yes, the volunteer mandates for students are offered during each term of the school year, so fall, winter, and summer, and can often be done as part of a co-op session. Just contact us for more information. Throughout the year, the campus team trains and shares resources with local committees, so they have the knowledge and tools to sponsor students, engage the public, and build a strong local committee. WISP brings local committee members together for trainings at the regional and national levels at different times in the school year. Yes, in terms of national training, with the whole network. The first one is the leadership meeting. This is a three-day training in August happening each year, especially designed for members taking on a leadership role in the coming year. 
This training takes place in the Ottawa Gatineau region and brings together around 100 young leaders representing almost all of the local communities around Canada. There is also the International Forum, which takes place each year in January. This training combines a day of International Development Conference with training for local committees and also WUSC General Assembly, which enables WUSC members, including local committees, to have a say in how WUSC is run. More than 300 local committee members join over 300 representatives from the government, from civil society, and from post-secondary institution for this exciting weekend of conference and training. The campus team also travels during the year, especially in September and October, for regional meetings. This year, there are regional meetings in Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and Halifax. To get more information about these dates, check out the WISC calendar available on our website. And there's also the resource page for local committees. That page contains many tools to support local committees' work on the Student Refugee Program, the One Girl Campaign, the Girls Access to Education Campaign, and also has a lot of uh, resources and documents for local committee management. You can find this page at wusc.ca slash resources. It's important to become familiar with my committee, which is our day-to-day -day way to stay connected with local committees. In collaboration with local committees, WUSC uses it to manage funding requests, report on activities, and collect intent to sponsor forms. This platform allows you to submit your application for the Catalyst Fund, an amount of $250 that's given to local committees for any activity or project. Through my committee, you can also apply for the travel subsidy for the International Forum for local committees that live farther than 600 kilometers from the conference venue. You can also submit your application for the One World Activity Funding that Sophie mentioned. It also allows us to measure the impact of our network's work. When you do an activity, let us know via my committee by telling us the date and the number of people informed and engaged or those who took action as part, part of your event. The campus team also includes three regionally based staff called regional liaison officers. Do not hesitate to contact the one in your area if you have questions or for more information. Now that you know more about the work of WISC, we hope to see you again on social media to continue the discussion. We're active on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for taking the time to join us for this presentation. I hope that it's deepened your understanding of WISC, but you can always feel free to contact us for any questions throughout the year. We look forward to collaborating with you. Thank you.